Hi, this is Ed, and welcome to The Outer Dark. There's a lot of speculation as to what Vault 7 could be. The teaser link that is currently being primed on the WikiLeaks Twitter. But what are the main theories right now as to what it could be? Well, stay tuned as The Outer Dark brings you five theories as to what Vault 7 could be. First, some context. There is no escaping it. If WikiLeaks is going to drop a leak soon, it is most likely a bombshell, since never has there been such an unprecedented tease from WikiLeaks itself, namely this time in the form of pictures which have been posted over the last week or so. Everyone is on edge from every direction, with everyone in the conspiracy field who are connecting the dots coming to the conclusion that this could much likely be Willy Wonka's golden ticket so to speak. It could be a leak that very well lets us inside the factory, namely in this case the deep state. But what are the main theories that people are speculating to right now? Well, number five. The first WikiLeaks tweet came right after the actual tweet by WikiLeaks which referenced Vault 7, namely the investigation into Hillary Clinton's private use of an email server. Evidence that could show that Hillary Clinton was indeed using classified emails from her private server. So this is one speculation as to what Vault 7 is. It's related to the current investigation into Hillary Hillary Clinton, thus finally providing the holy grail of evidence to indict Hillary Clinton herself. Number four, the next theory is that Vault 7 could in fact be about 9-11, and that WikiLeaks could have evidence that in fact 9-11 was an inside job, or orchestrated by some kind of faction within the United States. Evidence for this theory regarding Vault 7 comes in the form of clues in the pictures which some researchers have stated references 9-11, at least the core research within 9-11, such as the airplane engine being an F-119, which happens to be 9-11 in a European date form, as well as the picture of someone welding, which references another part of 9-11 research regarding the temperature melting of steel. Also, there's a picture of the German treasure trove, which references perhaps the missing gold from the World Trade Center. A number of researchers have stated there's a lot of links which imply that 9-11 is the bombshell about to be dropped, including the fact that WikiLeaks keeps on retweeting an actual video regarding 11 leaks from WikiLeaks. This has an image of 9-11 directly on it, and also involves a leak in the video regarding 9-11 and the pager data. If it does have the bombshell, it might just release it to the one person who might listen to it, at least the one person at the highest level of power right now namely Donald Trump. Why do people say that? Well, have a listen to what Donald Trump had to say about the collapse of the buildings. Take a look. So Donald Trump is on the line. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know him as the man behind lots of real estate in Manhattan. And of course, uh, Donald, I understand you were actually a witness to what happened this morning. Well, I have a window that looks directly at the World Trade Center, and I saw this huge explosion. I was with a group of people, and I, I, I really couldn't even believe it. And even, I think, worse than that, for years I've looked right directly at the building. I'd see the Empire State Building in the foreground and the World Trade Center in the background. Donald, I, you're probably the best known builder, uh, particularly of, of, of great buildings in the city. There's a great deal of question about whether or not the damage and, and the ultimate destruction of the buildings was caused by the airplanes, by architectural defect, or possibly by bombs or, or aftershocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was an architectural defect. You know, the World Trade Center was always known as a very, very strong building. Don't forget, that took a big bomb in the basement. Now, the basement is the most vulnerable place because that's your foundation, and it withstood that. And I got to see that area about three or four days after it took place because one of my structural engineers actually took me for a tour because he did the building. And I said, I can't believe it. The building was standing solid and half of the columns were blown out. I mean, so this was an unbelievably powerful building. Uh, if you know anything about structure, it was one of the first buildings that was built from the outside. The steel, the reason the World Trade Center had such narrow windows is that in between all the windows, you had the steel on the outside. So you had the steel on the outside of the building. That's why when I first looked, and you had big, heavy I-beams. When I first looked at it, I couldn't believe it because there was a hole in the steel. And this is steel that was, you remember the, the width of the windows in the World Trade Center, folks. I think, you, you know, if you were ever up there, they were quite narrow. 
and in between was this heavy steel. I said, how could a plane, even a plane, even a 767 or 747 or whatever it might have been, how could it possibly go through the steel? I happen to think that they had not only a plane, but they had bombs that exploded almost simultaneously, because I just can't imagine anything being able to go through that wall. Most buildings are built with the steelers on the inside around the elevator shaft. This one was built from the outside, which is the strongest structure you can have, and it was almost just like a, uh, like a can of soup. Number three, the next theory is that evidence of a shadow government is going to be released. What do I mean? Well, the FBI vault revealed itself a number of months ago in their own documents that there was a shadow government, as seen here, working within Washington. This shadow government was called the Seventh Floor Group, again, another reference to Seven, and involved, as the document stated, very high-level and powerful individuals who decided upon FOIA requests, as well as a number of other things. And here is where it gets interesting. Look at one of the people in the list of names. That's right, it's John Carey, one of the members of the Seventh Floor Group. Look at the last picture that was posted by WikiLeaks. That is, how did Vault 7 get to WikiLeaks? And ask yourself, who went to the Ecuadorian Embassy at the end of last year in order to talk to the Ecuadorian Ambassador? That's right, it was John Kerry. Now, of course, I'm not saying John Kerry was the leak. Most likely, it means that John Kerry was sent to the Ecuadorian Embassy on behalf of the 7th Floor Group to stop something like a leak. Maybe the leak had already happened and he was trying to clean it up. Remember that Julian Assange's internet got disconnected and he was placed in a type of box straight after John Kerry's visit. Whatever John Kerry did or whatever he said, he used influence in order to do something. In this case it looks like to shut Julian Assange down. Number two, and this might sound really strange, but if you look into it, there really is something happening in Antarctica. And here, I entertain all theories, of course, so I had to include this one. So what is it? Well, a number of people have been visiting Antarctica over the last year. A lot of really important people, such as the Russian Krill, for example, such as Buzz Aldrin, such as the Governor of Ambassador of Australia, and a number of high-level individuals, including the CIA Director who went to New Zealand, which is called the Stepping Stone for Antarctica. So there's a number of people there, including weapons manufacturers like Lockheed Martin, who are now recruiting for jobs down there. And of course, there was one other person who went down there of interest, and that is, of course, John Kerr. A member of the seventh floor group, as I stated prior, went to Antarctica on none less than actual election day. Now what's interesting about this is where did John Kerry go just before, in fact a couple weeks beforehand, that's right, he went to Ecuador, as if he was trying to stop the leak of something. In fact, straight after his visit, Ecuador cut off the internet of Julian Assange. Now you can see these two things as linked, because straight after, he went to Antarctica, only a few weeks later in fact. And remember what group he represents, the seventh floor group. Now here's where it gets just a little bit crazy because there's been a long time established theory within the conspiracy movement that in fact they're building some kind of doomsday bunker in Antarctica or indeed have found something. Now you might say why? Well there's a number of other factors involved in this mainline conspiracy and it goes all the way back to climate change as if the governments of the world are conspiring around climate change in order to hide something. Remember, although the climate change is propagated within the scientific community, there's also one other fact that world governments are concerned about, and that's the reducing fact behind the magnetic sphere. And although the magnetic sphere around the planet has been measured and is dropping, it is seldom, if never, mentioned in climate change research, although this would have a direct impact on the weather. Think about the wider picture. If something really was happening to our planet, what would the government do well they would prepare for it and I know this is all outlandish but it's something to entertain at least it's food for thought but what could they have found in Antarctica if there was something there or what could they be building there well have a look at this Google image this is real I've looked at it a number of times the coordinates will be in the description and the comments section this is hundreds of feet across and you can find it on Google Earth yourself and given the pattern of the ice shelf around it it looks really old although I don't really know but the fact is this is an artificial structure in Antarctica and something really massive what it is no one really 
really knows, but it is there. It's been confirmed, at least by this satellite imagery here. Could there be something in Antarctica? Well, of course, this is wild speculation, but this is evidence that there is indeed something there. Number one. And this is perhaps the most likely theory, and that is Vault 7 contains the 650,000 emails that the FBI has from Anthony Weiner's laptop. Remember, the NYPD, according to intelligence sources, copied these emails before handing them over to the FBI. And remember, Anthony Weiner is now facing child pornography charges, and these emails were located in a file called his insurance policy. So Anthony Weiner was keeping these, collecting them for an insurance policy. Maybe he was afraid that something would happen to him. Who really knows? But you don't keep 650 50,000 emails in a file system called insurance policy unless they contain a lot of dirt on everyone around you or at least those people that you're afraid of. The main theory as to what these emails contain is really everything. Indeed this would well be the treasure trove or holy grail of taking down the Clinton establishment once and for all. And remember what the Clinton Foundation has been linked to. In fact, if you look at all the theories, probably the most horrible or unimaginable one is child trafficking and human organ harvesting. Even if you don't believe in Pizzagate, you have to look at the world stage. Why is it before the election, when so many countries were giving hundreds of millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation, this all ended the most moment that Hillary Clinton lost the election. So why would you give so much money to a foundation unless you are getting something in return or perhaps being blackmailed into giving money to it? If you want evidence of blackmail, look at where the Clinton Foundation has lastly exited. That is every country it has exited. About three or four days later or maybe a week, there's been a massive child trafficking bus as if the beast has now left the village and the villagers are now free to go up into the cave and rescue the children. Anyway, this is all speculation. I have no idea what is in Vault 7, of course. I think it contains pizza dust myself, as well as a whole lot of very bad things. But you have to go out and do your own research and have a look at the few dot connections I have here and judge for yourself. Collect what makes sense to you and come to your own decisions. In the meantime, uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. And please give the video a thumbs up if you did like it. That helped me out really a lot. And this is Ed from the Outer Dark and I'll see you guys later.